Hey, I've got to clean my buddy's gun that he let me borrow. It's in this case. Shooting 22 long rifle ammunition, which is notoriously dirty. And this is the gun right here. This little Walther. We did use both magazines, so we'll pull both of those out. I always want to make sure that we drop the magazine and then open it up visually, physically inspect it, make sure there's nothing in the chamber so it's not going to go off. You know, we're safe to go ahead and, and uh, take this thing apart. Uh, interesting thing about this gun is it does have a magazine disconnect, so even when it is on fire, it will not go until the magazine is inserted. It's kind of a pain in the butt. One of the things I really dislike about it. This little gun comes apart. You have a takedown latch here and bring it on back. Comes apart kind of like a little macros do. And there we go. So we've got it got it apart now. Got the slide off guy rod and spring and uh, and then the main body of the weapon and uh, this does have the fixed barrel again the little macros some of the things that I'm going to use to clean uh, obviously you're going to need a, a rag uh, some kind of solvent I'm using pro shot it's an all-in-one I do like this a lot uh, for lubrication. I really do like the uh, Slip 2000 EWL, the Enhanced Weapons Lube. This is what I use on the ARs. Um, this is fantastic. Um, and you're going to need some little brushes. And I've got an assortment of brushes. Probably am not going to use a steel brush. So I'll put that aside. But yeah, brass and the nylon. And really, uh, short of anything, really, really heavy you probably won't need anything except for a nylon brush. And put a little bit of my solvent in the container separate from the actual bottle. I'm gonna dip the brush in it. Lightly coat everything. Could use a swab, something like that, just to let it work on it for a little bit. Same thing on the frame of the weapon. And I'll be back in just a second. I am going to get a swab so I can actually do some work on the uh, actual barrel of the weapon. All right, back with the friendly swabs. We can put some in here. Just go right in the front of the chamber. Could use a brush and patches and all that. This stuff works so well. You can see how much of the crud that it took out right away. And I'm going to follow it up with a uh, another cleaning. So I'm going to let this work on all the crud that's in there for right now. And it's been a cleaning uh, just a couple minutes, so we can go back to the slide and just work the swab down in the little nooks and crannies. I'm not going to completely break the slide apart. It's just not necessary having to fire that much. I'm just going to work this on it. You can see it's still taking off filing. Take the bristle brush and literally just scrub it. Not applying a lot of pressure, just enough to keep your brush in contact with it. And you can go keep going on with this as long as you would like. You just want to get it to the point where it's not taking quite as much crud out. If you're still getting crud, it's still dirty. Can you go overboard with this? Absolutely. I want to get the big chunks of carbon and fouling out of here so the weapon will still cycle correctly. I'm going to give 
back to my buddy that's been this way. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna scrub the bore a little bit with this. This is a little bit of opinion about working on a weapon with a fixed barrel like this. Um, the nice thing is you can access it and you're actually scrubbing it with a brush and it's going to go one direction. One of the tools that I really like to use is a bore snake. This is for uh, 22, 223 and uh, <laughs> greatest thing since sliced bread. It's got a weight on the end of the string and it even shows what caliber it is. I'm not sure if you can make that out. It's for 22s. Stamped on the side also. Um, let's see. Move it this way. And then you drop that in, bring it down, comes up to the beginning of the snake itself and you put some solvent on this and it has some bristles in it right here another little section of bristle brushes right there and then the rest of the snake I saw something one time said it has something like 270 times more surface than just a regular patch it makes it really fast usually one pass two passes is all you need again put some of the solvent right there take this and just drop the weight down brings it right through and then you just start to pull hold on to the weapon make it a little spray from the brushes and then just pull it through and now you have a really really nice clean barrel and that's just one pass I'm going to do it a second time drop it down in grab a hold of it get it to where it's lined up a little bit get some leverage pull it through now I'm done with that barrel that's a nice clean barrel alright now from this point really all I have to do is take my rag you just kind of wipe it down a little bit. You don't want to leave all kinds of crud all over it. A little residue from this pro shot is okay um, because it is also lubricant protecting as well. It's non-greasy, smells a little bit like grapefruit, and your uh, your wife won't object if you use this in the house, which is always the most important thing, right, honey? Right. So we're going to take a, a drop of this. EWL, you spread it all around here, all the bearing surfaces, metal on metal happens. Same thing, I'm just going to put a drop inside here and work it around also. About that much is really all you're going to need on the bolt of an AR. You might use or four or five drops of that stuff it really does last without gumming stuff up it is a great product uh, something that I highly recommend um, when you go to put this back together a little bit of a, a pain in behind because of the, the way it goes they actually have supplied with this little tool you get it out here and this is a little spring aligning tool. What you do with it is you put it through the front of the slide and it comes up in here and that's what you use to help align this spring when you go to put it on. The little Makarovs, all those style of guns, when you put them together and you put the spring up through the front and bring it up onto the top as you're going to put it back together sometimes a real pain in the butt to get that lined up so that's what this tool does you can kind of cheat and put it this way 
And then my buddy, who we had lost this at one point, actually found another real high tech tool. You know, two cent nail. It's a little bit longer, might be a little bit easier to actually use as well. So either way, you just use that to, to line it up with the front of the slide. Put it on there just like that. Because this way you can go ahead and, and find the correct alignment on your spring and your slide and you're putting it together. And then as you bring it back, you just kind of keep track of, of where that is at the moment. Um, keep bringing it back. You lift it up over, just like you would with any other macro, in order to bring it into the assembled position. So, as I say that, and the spring goes all over the line. All right, now, when we go to put this together, we got the spring, we've got the hole where it goes, and here's the guide rod, and the guide rod is very loose in there. So they have a little tool that you put through the hole in the front of the frame, or the front of the slide, and then drop it down through the spring here to align it. And it's just easier, I think, if you have it in this orientation and then you can actually see where the guide rod is bring it down so it clears both of them and you don't need the tool anymore kind of a pain in the butt that is how it is make sure that the locking block is way down pull it way back shove down it should go right onto the frame and then push up the locking block here and cycle it when it's on safe, it has a little locking block back here, a little locking or blocking mechanism so it blocks the firing pin. So even though once we put the mag in, it will go, it actually won't hit the firing pin. You can actually see when I move it to the firing position, the hammer moves this a little bit, especially if I I get back, there you go. You can actually see how it moves. So here, even though it'll go, it's not actually contacting the firing pin right there in that notch. See? It's completely blocked off of that. And then once we do this, you can see it'll actually come all the way forward versus here. There you saw it move back. So it's not going to hit it on fire. Strike it, watch as I move it to safe, and it back off of there. So there it is, clean and uh, ready to return the light.